Let's pray that that stays. Okay. Um, and then I need to probably lower some volumes a little bit. Just to make sure everyone's okay. And then let me go ahead and share screen. Let's see. Can you see that? Okay, let me let me fix it again. Cause I don't know. Can you guys hear the music? No. No. Okay, that probably explains why. So give me one second, and I'll re-square share it again. Okay. How about now? Hopefully the music's playing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I figure out how to fix it. Cool. Yeah, I know, right? I love teaching lo-fi hip hop. All right. So if you guys checked out classroom a i already posted our lesson so it's a second one called the conditionals chart this is just a brief overview for you guys to see the different conditionals so basically a refresher or if it's your first time seeing this um the conditionals is when you're using the word if at the front plus whatever phrase will follow after so they have different rules for conditionals realistically learning this in um, in America, I never learned about conditionals. It just happened. So I have no memory whatsoever that I ever learned conditionals until now, since I'm teaching it to you guys. So unfortunately, the list um, from what I saw in my list, provisions, whatever, they don't have the zero conditional. But just do know whenever you're using if something, you're trying to state it's always going to be a fact. So use this conditional to show an outcome that happens if a specific if a specific repeated condition is met. If he takes vitamins every day, he doesn't get sick. If he doesn't get sick, if he takes vitamins every day. So a lot of people like to associate the zero conditional is that there will always be a result that will always stay the same. So another example for you guys would be if you boil the water, it will it will heat up, it will bubble. So that's when you say if plus the present, if you heat up water, it will boil. So that will always be the case um, because it's a fact. So what they don't mention here for zero conditional is that it will always be a fact. It will always be the result. We will be focusing today on the first conditional. So real conditional if plus present. The present case would be the word will, I guess verb the pre the timeline would be present and future use this conditional to show a likely or possible outcome that will probably happen if a specific condition is met if she studies for the test she will get a good grade she will get a good grade if she studies for the test <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and do for the first conditional maybe on wednesday i'll focus on zero conditional since i've had uh, paperwork prepared in my last group for this so we'll just go one by one so we don't overwhelm one another so now if you look at the next worksheet i downloaded for you guys um, or posted for you guys look at the first conditional I'm just making sure everything's good um, so we're going to look at the grammar notes and then we're going to do some of these exercises um, it's up to you guys if you want to do all of them because there's a lot. There's a multiple choice, fill in the blank matching, complete the sentences, negative sentences, scrambled sentences, superstitions. I don't know if this one is um, matching or just writing. There's a survey and there's a quiz. So I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to do that. All right. So we are now looking at grammar notes. The first conditional is an introduction to conditionals. Conditionals are used to express hypothetical situations. So the first conditional is a hypothetical question. This is when you don't know if something will happen or not. So you make a guess about what the result might be. There are four conditional patterns in the English language, and they usually involve if as a clause. This lesson will focus on the first conditional, also known as the real conditional. So if plus present will plus base verb. Use the first conditional to show a likely or possible outcome that will probably happen in a certain condition it's met. So. In the if clause, a simple present verb and the verb in the main clause is will, plus base form of the verb. The sentence can begin with either a clause or no meaning, no change in meaning. Remember that a sentence begins with an if clause is followed by a comma. If it's sunny tomorrow, they will go to the beach. 
if they will go to the beach if it's sunny tomorrow. So other examples, sentences. If I study for the test, I will get a good grade. I will get a good grade if I study for the test. So why they have the same sentence is just they flipped where if is going to be presented. So notice here, you're saying the cause. If I do this, then this will be the effect. If I study for the test is a cause, I will get a good grade is the effect or the result. But if you start with the result first, then if will, if will be um, the second line. And then another thing I want to point out is watch out where the comma is. Usually if you're stating the cause of the sentence of the clause or whatever, then you will put the comma after that statement. If I study for the test, comma, I will get a good result. I mean, I will get a good grade. But if you flip it, notice there's no comma there at all. So the condition here is studying. So if I study, that's the condition and the outcome is good grades. So studying makes it likely that I will get a good grade on the test. So that's the explanation. And this is why it falls under the first conditional, because there's a, an ability of the likelihood of it happening. If Mr. Smith has a second cup of coffee, comma, he will probably be late for work. Or Mr. Smith will probably be late for work if he has a second cup, uh, a second cup of coffee. So the condition is about the second cup of coffee and the outcome is he will be late for work. So condition here is just a fancy way of saying what's the cause, like what is basically going to be the result. Um, so what will what is the cause before it results into whatever the outcome is? And of course, outcome is the result. And then the explanation, having another cup of coffee makes it possible that Mr. Smith will be late. Okay, more examples. Um, if they rehearse a lot, they'll be ready for their concert next weekend or they'll be ready for their next concert next we weekend if they rehearse a lot. So the condition is rehearsals, so rehearsing. The outcome is ready for the concert. And of course, they said the explanation is the likelihood that the, that the, the band is ready, that they will be ready if they put some time invested into practicing. And then the, not, the last one, if she doesn't buy a new suit, she won't have anything to wear for the, to the interview. Um, she won't have anything to wear to the interview if she doesn't buy a new suit. So notice earlier I kind of said a different word instead of two, I said four. Or like, oh, here, not that, not the first two here. If she doesn't buy a new suit, she won't have anything to wear for the interview. So a lot of people go with four or two. Um, People say wear to the interview, so it's kind of like when you say the word to, like you're going to wear this outfit to the event, so there's a direction for towards it. Other people, for me, I would also say for the interview because you're telling me the reason why you're buying the outfit. So for is showing there's a purpose, so what's the purpose? Um, she won't have anything to wear for the interview, so... That's why people who say two or four, I personally will accept it because they work both ways. But just keep note that two and four may not always be used appropriately in some occasions. But for this one, if you put four, that's okay. Yeah. So going on conditions, there's new suit and the outcome is something to wear to the interview. Um, explanation, not buying a new suit means she won't have an appropriate interview outfit. All right. So tip two, three, and tip four. So number two, it is possible to have a negative verb in, in the if clause. The main clause are both. The, contra the contraction of will not is won't. So if I don't pass this test, my parents will be very angry. If I forget to water the plants, they won't survive. If I'm not late for work again, I won't have to look for another job. So kind of notice here, they, they showed you that the negative, um, the negative usually shows in one sentence, right? So if it's at the front, then if I don't pass this test, my parents will be very angry. So will be. So showing you that there will be a consequence. If I forget to water the plants, they won't survive. Um, so this sentence here is coming off as positive only because there's no not word pres presented there, but it's presented here. However, this one's a tricky one. I personally don't like this because it's called a double negative. So if I'm not late for work again, I won't have to look for another job. 
So this one's very tricky. Um, you might have to stop and think about this for a moment. So I'm going to break it down with you guys. So if I'm not late for work again, so let's say if I attend work on time, I won't have to look for, um, then I will keep my job. It's basically what the sentence is saying. But they're presenting it as a double negative, which is why you have to sit down and think for a second, like, why? Like, why did you decide to do this? So, again, if I'm not late for work again, this should have been rephrased as I will keep my job. But they wanted to confuse you so they can, so you can see that there, there's a possibility of using a double negative. I won't have to look for another job. I feel like this is more of like walking around the topic. It's not very direct. And it's a little bit more confusing. Even I would say that personally, but in grammar, that's acceptable. That's all. That's the only purpose why they put it there. Tip number three, the verb in the if clause will end in S if the subject is, is third person singular. If she watches that sad movie, she will cry. She will cry if she watches that sad movie. And in tip four, though not as common, it is possible to use be going to plus base verb or the present progressive, which are the two other ways of forming the simple future in English in place of will plus base verb with no change in the meaning. For example, these sentences all have the same meaning. If it doesn't rain, we will, we will go for a walk. If it doesn't rain, we are going to go for a walk. If it doesn't rain, we are going for a walk. So in any case, um, they're just identifying the different tenses. So of course, this one is the future tense. So we're focusing on the future. If it doesn't rain, we will go for a walk. Um, so to specify this even more, it means this is a plan. It's, there's no action. It's no, no action is taking place. It's just the thinking process before it takes place, right? So if it doesn't rain, we are going to go for a walk. When you see the words like this, are going to go, um, of course, the word are going is going to be the present continuous. That means it's in the motion of taking place. Um, we are going to go for a walk. This one's a little bit complex because uh, we are going to go for a walk. Let's see. So this is in the process of gonna do it, I guess you could say, because the, the word here to go, we're going to go for a walk. Um, it's as if I, it's at, like picture this you're gonna tell your mom hey if it doesn't rain we are going to go for a walk doesn't mean doesn't mean we're gonna go it's just almost in the process of it happening so it's before you go into the field of action I guess you could say so this is thinking about it the process this one is stating that you will be going and you're almost in the process of doing it if it doesn't rain we are going for a walk this is like as if you're already in the action like it's about to happen or something like that so a lot of people get confused about these three because will go is the future tense these two focus more in the present which is why it's confusing so please don't worry too much about them if you put any of these three they're totally acceptable and it's fine um, it doesn't really matter um, I guess a lot of natives really don't care whether you use the future or the other tenses of present like no one cares. We get it. Like, we get what you're trying to say. But yeah. But if you meet grammarists, or grammarists, yeah, grammarists, they might be a little bit anal and be like, maybe if you're doing it right now, then you should do the present continuous. But honestly, who cares? All right. So do you guys have any questions so far? I'm like checking messages here. Yeah, sorry that I'm reading them late. Makana says, it seems like if of programming la languages, yeah. Could it be, John wrote, um, could it be if it doesn't rain, we are going for a walk, keep, keeping the same meaning? Yeah, so basically, like I said, John um, or Jean, these are basically the same meaning. It's just, if you really want to look at the condition, like, not sorry, not the conditional, the semantic meaning behind it, it's just specifying, are you talking about, is it a plan or is it a plan in motion? So that's what I'm trying to say. So here it's a plan. So there's nothing, you're just saying that you have a plan that you will do something, but there's no action taking place. However, with these ones, these are plans in motion. So you're stating, I'm going to go for a walk if it doesn't rain. So 
that's the plan. And then you check the weather. Oh, it's not raining. I'm going to go for a walk. Bye. So this, these two are just focusing on the present. But in any case, there's really no difference between the future and it. It's just, do you care more that it's happening in the present or do you care that it's a plan for the future? That's all there is to it. Okay. And then Ari. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm glad I explained it to you. All right. So Ari, going to then is like another way of future. Yeah. So going to. So, so basically, if you think of to do, right? So if you think of um, you're you're doing something like, let's say like, yeah, just a motion of to do something. So going to is kind of using that phrase. So I'm going to go for a walk is the equivalent saying like, I will do this action if it's not raining. Any other questions? Yeah. Awesome. No problem. All right. So please don't worry about the present continuous tenses. We'll eventually come around and address those because they are very confusing at times and no one really uses no one really thinks about them anymore like looking at them uh, grammatically I guess it's confusing and a little bit intimidating in that manner but when you apply it in real life no one really cares which one you use yeah so going to is like nearer future than will right um going to is more like um, yeah, it could be, but it can also be used as future. So there's no really, there's actually no specific timeline between using will and going to. They're basically the same. Will is just more of an, a plan and going to is the actions kind of taking place. So yeah, I guess you could say it's kind of near the, near the present. Then again, it doesn't really matter because there's no timeline behind the words. It just depends on where do you want to focus, present or future. That's, that's the main question. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're moving on for the next portion here. I think John is, uh, is it Jean de la Foy? I, I, I don't know if that's French. I don't know if I'm even saying your name correct. Let's do because the classroom is the end of song. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you for joining me. I love playing lo fi music whenever I'm teaching because it's just so relaxing. All right, so. Without further ado, I'll let you guys do exercise one, multiple choice. Um, you guys can just type in the answer in the group. Just make sure you put your spoiler. So like basically your two lines. So like this, for example, what I'm presenting. It's using these two lines. Just get rid of the period in the middle. Yeah, so like what I'm doing, just get rid of the period there for the coding and then just put your text in the middle. You can just do the letters instead of writing the words because it'll make my life a little bit easier. And please don't worry, I'll go over the answers at the end. So go ahead and take your time, you guys. One through eight for exercise one.
Cool, excellent job, Ari, for marking that. You're not sure about number six. I, you got number six correct. So you're good. I'm also double checking answers while I'm here. Um, so let's see what Mariana wrote. Excellent job. Mariana, everything's perfect score. You didn't take your time, Makana, and also John or Jean. Uh, okay, so Ari's question was she wasn't sure if number six had the S. She will marry him if he asks her. So yeah, when you say um, the S sound, even some native people have issues pronouncing that as well. And even me. So the way I said it's kind of weird. So you say ask, then s after. I say it quickly now, so it's asks. So it's very, very quick. And... You are. This is the correct answer because of the fact that the noun is singular. So, so you needed to take your time, Makana. It's okay. So, one is. Excellent job, Makana. Everything's a perfect score from what I see. Then anyone else want to try? Excellent, excellent job, John or Jean. How do you want me to pronounce your name? Is it John or Jean? Jean, like if it's it French? My Spanish comes out at the, with that S at the end. Yeah. I definitely understand that Ari because I know a lot of people when they say S, it's like, do you guys say like S a lot? So there might be like just that complication of that L1 transferring could be an issue why it sounds like it. Yeah, askesis. Yeah. So it's just the asks. It's like you're swallowing the S sound. Jean, it's... Jean, it's a legend in Brazil. Mm. Is it like IPA? Because when I read IPA, the J is like a ya sound. A myth, I mean. Ah, okay. So Jean. Jean. I'm saying it correctly, right? Jean? Hey, 
Wait, I'm sorry, Makana? Mm hmm. I see, I see. I think um, Jean is writing something. While Jean is writing, I'll go over with the answers. Everyone got 100%. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you guys the answers. Number one. If she goes to my to the if she goes to the birthday party on Sunday, she will take a present. That's actually kind of weird to say. She will take a present. Is that British? Huh. She will take a present. I think what they they should say is she will bring a present. That's very strange. But anything's good. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm butchering names. G J J on J on. I guess. Ja'on. Am I getting close? I'm still guessing it. Oh, there you go. Yay, Ja'on. I'll try to say it. Cool. So I'll continue as well. Or she will take a present. She will have to take a present. Well, if you want to put... Um, Ari has a good point. If you say she will have to, now you're including modals into it. That would still be correct regardless. But since we're just focusing on conditionals, they drop the modals for now. Oh, it's okay, Makana. Don't worry about it. Everyone is practicing together, so it's okay. Um, number two, the answer is A. I will call the doctor if my stomach still hurts tomorrow. Three, she will do the exercises again if she... Three is B. If she makes a lot of mistakes. Four is C. If they practice a lot, they will win the game next weekend. Number five is A. I will take my umbrella if it rains tomorrow. Six is C. She will marry him if he asks her. Seven is A. If we go out tonight, we will lock the door. And eight is C. If I if I will make sorry, I will make a sandwich if I am hungry. Perfect. So excellent job everyone. We are now moving to exercise number two. This one is fill in the blank. Fill in the blanks using the correct form of the verb provided. So notice that the verb here is goes because remember your subject verb agreement. Whatever your subject is, is it one person or is it or is it more than one person? If it's one person, you do need the S. Go is uh I guess you could say it's an irregular. Um, it's an irregular conjugation in the present tense because you add the E for goes, for present tense. If Robert goes to bed late tonight, he will sleep in. So remember to put will at the front. Um, and then I'll check how you guys do. You guys can go ahead and do 1 to 14. Let me see if I can scroll this down. There you go. 1 through 14, and then go ahead and post your answers here when you're ready.
Excellent job, Ari. That's a perfect score. Be good. I'm gonna check Makana's answers next. I wish there was a way I could do this. Do that. So, Makan, I only put one thinking face because I think you misspelled drink on number 10. Other than that, it looks like everything's perfect. Yeah. So, other than that, everything's perfect. It's just a misspelling on number 10 when you said drink. You put drink. But it's okay. I'll still take it. Perfect. So, Mariana, perfect on everything. So far, everyone's done an excellent job. So I'm just wondering if John is still working on it. So I'll just wait for for John to finish. Jean to finish. It's okay if you don't want to provide an answer, just let me know. I'm just waiting for everyone so they get the chance to practice. Meanwhile, I'm here like thinking, should I order pokey? Because I'm so hungry right now.
Okay, cool. So John posted. Mm -hmm. So half of number two is incorrect. So, or like not incorrect, something's missing. Yeah, no worries. Take your time, honestly. Thank you for participating, though. Yeah, so everything from what I see, John. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna keep butchering your name. So it's just um, number two on the second one. There's just a word for you of uh, seeps in. Um, no, no, no. For number two, so miss slash will something. So after will, there's a word missing, and that's it. Yep, that's it. There you go. So other than that, everything's perfect. So excellent job. All right. So reading this and your answers, you guys, this is actually a very sad story. Um, so it looks like our, our boy here, Robert, is going through a breakup. Um, so if he sleeps in, he will miss his bus. Two, if he misses the bus, he will be late for work. He, if he is late for work, his boss will be angry if Robert's boss is angry he will fire him if Robert loses his job his girlfriend will get upset with him if Robert's girlfriend gets upset with him she will break up with him seven if she breaks up with him he will be lonely if Robert feels lonely he will call some friends if Robert calls some friends they will ask him to their party. If Robert goes to the party, he will drink too much beer. If Robert drinks too much beer, he will need a ride home. If, Rob if Robert needs a ride home, he will have to... He will have to stay until the end of the party. If Robert stays until the end of the party, he will get home very late. If Robert gets home... Um, if Robert gets home late, he will go to bed late. So as you can see, this is like a continuation, like a stream of conscious of how bad Robert's day can get and how it can take a plunge for the worst if he's late for school. So basically what he's saying is if he's late for work, his whole life will go into a perpetual state where it'll just go down the toilet. So he loses everything. Um, so I don't think you should overthink this much. <laughs> he probably will get a warning for just being late and scolded and that's it. If this is his first one. Um, his girlfriend probably might be upset, but it shouldn't be leading into a deal breaker where you guys would have to break up. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, I think this is very funny. Yeah. So yeah, poor Robert. I agree with you, John. Mariana is also giving a sad face. Uh, Makana, no, it's just break to jump higher next time. <laughs> Sorry, this story is literally what the butterfly effect is. Yeah, that's it. that's exactly it. Very good phrase to say it. So I couldn't find the word. It's also known as the domino effect. So this is a very, very extreme case of a domino, domino and, or if you want to call it the butterfly effect, that's it. So insane, but <laughs> yeah, insane butterfly effect. It's so dramatic. I agree with you guys. So I think this is very funny shouldn't be the case though but 
Yeah. Excellent job though, everyone. So if you guys want to do exercise three and four at the same time, you are more than welcome to. <laughs> but for now, I will only ask for you guys to submit exercise three. So try to match these to the right parts and then I'll go over it. Then I will also ask you to do exercise four. So I know you want to I know some of you guys really want to do exercise one uh, three and four at the same time. It's up to you guys. If you want to do one at a time, which I will go over one at a time, that's fine. But if you already have your answers for exercise four, just make sure you hold on to them until we finish exercise three. So without further ado, you guys can go ahead and do exercise three and submit them as usual.
All right, so we got Jean, perfect score. I'm pretty sure Mariana's gonna get perfect score too. It's just number one was missing, being listed, but everything else is there. Nice job, Ari. Perfect score. First one's already done. Oh, right. You're right. Okay. You're right, Mariana. So it's okay. Even if you didn't list it, that's perfect. So I will get, I will un... How do I unreact? There you go. Give you a perfect score. There you go. Thank you for pointing that out. Makana, perfect score. Awesome job. And I see Makana already like posted the answers for exercise four. Just wait one moment before I grade that. I think that's everyone, right? We got Makana, I got Ari, we got Sean. And I got Mariana. Yeah, that's that's everyone. Perfect. So Excellent job for number one for exercise. Number one is H. Um, if you don't, if you eat too much candy, your teeth will hurt. Two is G. If you don't study, you will fail your exam. Three is I. Um, you will have bad dreams if you watch a scary movie before bed, which is I, this is why I don't like watching scary movies. Um, four is E. If you eat lots of vegetables, you will be healthy. Number five. J, you will burn yourself if you play with matches. Six is B, if you are late for school. Um, the teacher will keep you in after class. Eh, nah, to be honest, no one cares. You probably might just like sit out for recess, if anything, if you're in elementary school. Or you get a warning or go to detention. That's about it. Um, seven is F. If you practice the piano every night, you will play beautifully. Eight is C. If you don't finish your dinner, I won't let you have any dessert. Nine is D. If you behave nicely, I will buy you a treat. And ten is A. Um, I will pay you $10 if you babysit your little sister tonight. Because who wants to take care of their sibling, right? Am I right, guys? <laughs> I wasn't paid at all. My childhood was sad. <laughs> So, <laughs> me too, I feel. That's why I don't watch horror movies at all, no matter the time. Dude, like, my partner likes to watch all of these scary shows with me. There's one from BuzzFeed called Are You Scared? We watched that one, I never looked at mirrors the same again. I was like, oh my god, I'm scared to see a face or something, blah blah blah. I'm like, this is why I don't, I don't watch this crap. And then I always block it out of my head. <laughs> Ari says, I'll go to your permanent file or something like that. Teachers threat you. <laughs> yeah. I totally get you, Makana. I said about taking my sister too. Yep. Alright, so if you guys already did exercise four, go ahead and post them. I think Makana already posted, so let me go ahead and read this. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept a lot of your answers, Makana. I know the ones questionable is number two and also four because you might not understand the meaning behind those. So 
I think a popular opinion for two is that clothes can they can change color, they can shrink. Um, it will if you wash your if you wash your woolen clothes in hot water, it might loosen the fabric. It can be anything. So honestly, um, the answer varies, but as long as it makes sense to me, I'll accept it. So that's fine. And then number four, when you said if you don't wear sunscreen, um, so basically sunscreen is a lotion that protects your skin from the sun, um, especially if you have very sensitive and fair skin. So what happens to your skin if you don't wear sunblock? You get burned. So that's the result. I think that's usually the only answer. If you don't wear sunscreen, you will get a sunburn. Or you can even go off topic and say, if you don't wear a sunscreen, we're not going to go to the beach. We're not going to the swimming pool, etc. Anything can be your answer. So go ahead, you guys submit your answers for 1 to 8. And I'll also go over them. Got Ari's examples. You won't feel good. I'll just read your answers out loud too because they are various answers. Number one, if you don't water the plants, they will die. Yep. If you wash your wool clothes in hot water, they will shrink. Yep. Three, if you eat too many sweets, your stomach will get upset. That's actually one of the answers people said as they wrote as well. Um, if you don't wear sunscreen, you will risk to burn your skin. So instead of saying risk to burn your skin, you will you will burn your skin. Just get straight to the point. You can also say, I don't think people say you will risk to get a, your, your skin burnt. I get what you're saying, but it's probably a different word choice. So probably you would say um, is if you don't wear, if you don't wear sunscreen, you will probably burn your skin instead of saying you will risk. I will read you a bedtime story if you finish your dinner. Nice. You will be punished if you don't listen to mom. Or you can say to your mom, to your mother, um, if you don't listen to mom, that, that should be fine too. Um, seven, if you drive too fast, you will get a traffic ticket. That was actually one of the answers as well. You'll be tired in the morning if you don't go to sleep right now. Very good, excellent job. So yeah, other than the other than number um, four with the two risk, just drop two, just drop risk two. You will. Um, you will burn your skin would be better. So just drop um, risk in two. Everything looks good. Okana. Yes, Brazilian that works at the sun a lot. I've never needed sunscreen. So uh, that's awesome because I know some people have very good... Um, there's, a, there's a word for it. Is it called melatonin or melanin? I think it's melanin, not melatonin. Melatonin should be in terms of a medication that you that puts you to sleep. So I think the word is melanin. So you have really good melanin in your skin where you don't really need sunscreen. As for me, um, I don't really need it. Not unless I'm at the beach or if I'm playing tennis, I, I need sunscreen because I play under the sun for several hours and I get burned pretty, pretty badly too. Yes, um, traffic ticket is a is a valid word. You can say, um, some people say traffic ticket. I think it might be used in some countries. Um, in America, we call it speeding ticket. So there you go, um, Ari. A speeding ticket. Okay. And then Mariana, let's see your answers so we can compare them. Um, if you don't water the plants, they will dehydrate and die. That's fine. If you wash your wool clothes in the hot in hot water, they are going to spoil. So if you say the word to spoil, it sounds more like food or as if a plant will like die off too. So I wouldn't say wool could spoil. Wool could unravel. Wool can shrink, I guess would be better. Um, if you eat too many sweets, your head will hurt. That's actually interesting. Um, I think for some people that can work too because you're sensitive to sweet. So it can cause a headache. Um, if you don't wear sunscreen, you are going to burn. Um, so get the word get before burn. 
and then burnt as with a T at the end, get burnt. Why? Because you're telling them that there's this action or like there's this result of that the action of getting burned is happening to them. Because if you say you're going to burn, I'm thinking of like a matchstick. If you put it under a micro, uh, if you put it under a magnifying glass, it sets on fire. So you are going, you are going to get burnt would be the phrase for that. Um, five, I will read you a bedtime story if you treat me well today. Hmm. I'm kind of iffy about that because of the word choice. So you're you're most likely saying this to a kid. So what do you mean when a kid treats you well today? Because they technically can't treat you well. Uh, maybe like maybe the suggestion would be the word choice is if you obey me today, if you respect me, if you go to bed, if you listen to mommy, etc., or daddy, whatever you want to say. So just um just be aware of who you're talking to about this. Because technically there needs to be a person to direct that to. Give me one second. Yay! My food's getting delivered in like three minutes. <laughs> um, five. I will read you a bedtime story if you treat me well today. Okay, we did that. Six, you will be punished if you don't do your homework. So you don't need the S for homework. Because homework is considered as an uncountable noun. You can't tell if homework means one or it means... Sorry, that's my phone. Um, you can't tell if homework is plural or singular. Homework is an uncountable noun. Um, just like when you say hair or when you say sand. Um, it can be plural and it can be singular. And oftentimes homework is used as an adjective. Homework assignments. So that the S goes for the assignments. So that's how I would um, say it. So if you want to say, you will be punished if you don't do your um, do your homework assignments. Oh my god, my phone is blowing up. Um, and then seven. If you drive too fast, you will hit something. And then you'll be tired in the morning if you sleep too late, so that's fine. So, excellent job for everything else there. Or a child spoiled. Um, yeah, if a child is spoiled, then they shouldn't even be treated to anything <laughs> to get burned. There you go, man. To Mariana. Well, you were making me hungry. I'm sorry, you guys. I was just like, I'm just like craving sushi. I've been watching too many YouTube videos of people eating sushi, and I'm just like, I want some right now. So, <laughs> sorry. All right, you know the drill. Time to do exercise five. This time it's similar to exercise two or exercise, yeah. Similar to exercise two, but this is gonna be written in negative form. So won't play. So just put, I think you should just put won't at the front. That's my hint to you guys. Other than that, just go ahead and do one through 16. And then double check. There you go. So hopefully that captures everything. If not, just let me know. Um, I think 16 is missing. Hold on. Yeah, that should be all of them. All right. So y'all know the drill. Post your answers.
All right. I guess I missed Mariana because um, I had to pick up the food, literally. <laughs> All right. Good for John. All right. So we'll go ahead and just do this one. Ah, uh, I see. So, um, so Jean number one, I think you have an error because they won't, they won't grow and th then we'll die. Hold on. We will lose our color. Jean, is this one for number exercise five, right? I lose the color. Or are we looking at the other one? Oh, okay. You're doing that exercise four. Never mind. So they will lose their color. Three. If you eat too many sweets, you will become diabetic. Huh? <laughs> that's the that's the that's, the, <laughs> that's spitting the truth. That's so true. Four. You will hurt your eyes. We don't wear sunscreen. Wait, you will hurt your eyes. Uh, sunscreen, it's it's not sunglasses. I think you mis um, you misread that. So sunscreen is a lotion for your skin. Sunglasses is where you'll get blind. Um, you'll hurt your eyes. Um, five, I will read you a bedtime story if you want me to do so. Six, you will be punished if you don't behave nicely in your on your birthday. So not in your birthday, on your birthday. Or at your... You, you don't behave nicely during your birthday party would actually be better sorry so not in or on since the word party showed up that's why i changed it to during your birthday party seven if you drive too fast you you might get a fine which is fine you um you'll be tired in the morning if you sleep too late at night yeah excellent job so i think that's enough for our practice and then we'll continue five through eight on wednesday because I know this is a lot of exercises and we can only do so much for an hour or so. So I'm just going to go ahead and close class and save exercise for tomorrow then. So I'm sorry if you guys already have your answers for exercise five, you're welcome to post it. I will still grade it regardless, but we will go over it on, on um, Wednesday. So sorry about that, guys. I lost track of time because it's already been past an hour. Do you guys have any other questions for me? And then I'll do exercise five on Wednesday with y'all. Um, go ahead and post it in the chat, Makana. I'll still grade it there. I'll give you the reactions. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys for showing up. I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, so I will see you at the same time on Wednesday um gmt 8 p.m uh sorry let me rephrase that i will see you again at 8 p.m gmt negative seven which is los angeles time um and then we'll do exercise five through eight finish it up if you want to post your answers now you're more than welcome to and i'll grade them and then if you have any other questions feel free to post them in the you in the english where's the english questions Where did we put that? Where did we put that word? Oh, English questions. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, look under free materials and it says English questions with an, a question mark emoji. You can post any questions and then either me or Brittany will respond to your questions, etc. Right. Other than that, thank you guys for showing up. Have a wonderful day ahead of you. Evening, afternoon, whichever. And I will see you guys on my next lesson. Take care.
Let me go ahead and close this too. 